morning guys, hope you're all well. It is Friday morning here in Fiji. It absolutely pissed down last night, which has us a little bit, little bit overcast, but pretty glassy conditions. So what I'm thinking today is I'm thinking of just doing a little bit of a recon mission. Um, I was thinking, I was sitting here yesterday actually, just last night with the sunset, looking out there over the ocean, and I remembered a little spot that I drove over uh, back in, it was probably January or something like that. It's a fair way out in the bay, um, but it looked like a really good spot on the, the sounder, like the bottom looked really good. Um, and I thought, man, when it becomes Spanish mackerel season, um, I reckon that place is gonna hold a few fish. So haven't been back there since, and I'm gonna go a bit of a recon and check it out, and I'm gonna take you guys with me. So I'll go get some fishing gear. Um, Probably, probably more trawling. Um, and I might even take, what, what I might do is I might take some light, light stuff. So if we do find some Spanish mackerel and they're, uh, you know, they're feeding up on top, uh, it's always fun to, to take a little small lure across the surface and see if we can get a few to launch out of the water. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, we'll see how we go. Gonna be interesting to see how much water is in the tinny. Cause like I said, like look at the, the visibility is shocking. We had so much rain last night, it pissed down. Like it woke up our whole house. Kids even got a little bit scared. So, uh, and the tinny is sitting low and twisted. <laughs> yeah, there's some rain in there. All right. automatic bilge pump died so I've always got sort of one ear on the on the rain during the night because if it really pisses down like monsoonal style I gotta paddle out here and uh, It's a Spanish Mac. These things are so bony at the front. Mouthful of razor sharp teeth. So often I lose them at the boat. But that is gonna taste amazing. Now we just gotta get it in the boat. Whoa. 
Well, I was confident this spot was gonna hold, uh, hold some Spanish mackerel. This, if you've never eaten Spanish mac, go out and get some, try it. It's phenomenal, I love it. It's one of my favorite fish in the ocean to eat. So what we might do is we'll hang here for a bit. I'll get, like literally I've only been here five, 10 minutes. So uh, I'll have a bit more of a snoop around, see if we can hook maybe another one of these. Um, and we'll probably stop at two. Um, and then we might do a bit of a, a cook up with this. Um, we'll do like a beer batter. Not so healthy, but tastes phenomenal. Like some, some Spanish mackerel in beer batter. You can not go wrong. All right guys, so the recon mission I would say is a success. It definitely holds fish. There's heaps of fish here. And we got that Spanish Mac as soon as we got here. But I would say I reckon I probably missed the bite today. Like I was probably a little bit late. I didn't really check tides. I didn't really, um, you know, check any of that sort of stuff. Um, but it would have been a, probably a red hot bite probably about an hour earlier, I reckon, with the, with the runoff. Um, but yeah not complaining so we'll put this one in the memory bank and we'll definitely come back here when we need to uh, put some fish in the freezer um, so what we'll do with that spanish mac we'll go home now we'll fill it that up um, and then a little bit later tonight we might i'm thinking like beer batter like beer batter burgers and uh beer battered onion rings to go with it so uh it's friday so you can lash out a little bit and and have a bit of the uh, the cheat meal type thing um, and uh, yeah I'll show you how I make my beer batter and um, yeah I'll show you these burgers with a bit of I think yeah beer battered fish burger with onion rings and honey mustard dressing so uh, let's do it man I'll see you back there So I have been looking forward to this since catching that Spanish mackerel this morning. I'm gonna make a beer batter and then I'm gonna do some beer battered uh, onion rings and I'm gonna make a honey mustard dressing. So I can't take credit for this beer batter because it's my dad's, but super simple. And disclaimer here is you can almost feel your arteries getting hard eating this stuff. It's like. It's, it's fried, it's not healthy at all. But the beer batter is a cup of gin. flour. Gin, thank you. The gin is not necessary, but recommended. <laughs> so about a cup of flour. I don't even know if that's a cup or not. Some butter, and you gotta melt the butter, right? So roughly a tablespoon of butter. Let's just kick this thing in the guts and melt it. So we wanna melt, melt some butter, all right. So some nice melted butter. So in the flour, you want to put a bit of pepper. Like I put a fair bit of pepper in, but if Beck sees me putting a fair bit of pepper in, she goes off the tits at me. Enough. It's enough. It's enough. You need a lot of pepper. <laughs> What's your beer? I have beer batter without beer. So pepper, like a pinch of salt, and then you get the butter. Put the butter in a cup. Get an egg, fresh from Kiev's egg laying hole, whatever that one is. If you haven't met our chicken Kiev, that's Dolly just doing her thing, <laughs> looking after the house. So if you haven't met our chicken Kiev, the one-eyed chicken, we'll introduce you along the way. So an egg, crack that in there. Then what we do is we crack a coldy. Huh? I want to do it. Do what? I want to cook it. And we, we stir it all up, break the egg. So I think probably the secret, or the thing you want to get right, you want to pour that in. So you hold that, don't pour it in yet. Because the secret is, hold that over the thing, is to have this, I guess in the same amount of liquid as you have flour. So basically that was full of flour and now that's full of liquid. So pour that in, Morgs. What are you doing? Sweet. So pour it in. Then we whisk it up. So I've used self-raising flour, but you can use plain flour as well. So basically the difference is just how fluffy, it, like 
when you use self-raising flour, they, it puffs up like pillows of golden amazingness. When you uh, use plain flour, it's more of a, a thinner coating. How's that going, Morks? Pretty good. Looking pretty good? Thin. Awesome. So that's it, that's pretty good. Good to go. So what I do then, is I just sit that in the, sit it in the fridge while I'm stuffing around with the rest of the stuff. Like my dad, I reckon he makes it like in the day, like in the afternoon, leaves it in the fridge all day. I just make it like, you know, half an hour before I'm cooking. So we'll sit that in the fridge, chill that down while I make the dressing and cut the onions. Okay, now for the honey mustard dressing, just some mayo. I love this, like the proper traditional whole egg. I think it says, Made with free range eggs or whatever, but like the not the not the cheap crap mayo. So some good mayo, bit of mustard, like um, I guess American type mustard. So a bit of that. This dressing is ridiculously good. Honey, bit of honey. Get rid of that bug. Paprika. Ooh. Balsamic vinegar, and it's a new bottle. Come on. Oh yeah, breaking the seal, baby. So, balsamic vinegar. And another one I'm breaking the seal on is Dijon mustard. Hang on, I'll just grab a clean. I'm gonna get in trouble. If I put a dirty thing in there, I'll get in trouble. So I'm gonna get a clean spoon to chuck in there. All right. Some spicy mustard. And then what I do is I just get a little pinch of salt. Pinch of salt in there, not too much. And mix it all up. So this dressing is ridiculously good on so many things. Like squid salad. I don't really eat chicken, but chicken salad it's amazing on. Um, like fish burgers like we're doing. Beef burgers, chicken burgers. Oh my god, I'm smelling that now, I'm just going crazy. Beck, come smell this. My taste testing. No, you smell testing. Smell. Oh, mm. it's like this mine. is like the strand all over again. So the, the cafe that I took Beck to uh, for our first date um, about how many centuries ago? <laughs> so Nearly two. So, you know, you're supposed to be acting like a big tough guy and all that. And I ordered a chicken salad. And, uh, and I'm thinking like... Who's this loser? Oh, he's who's obviously this? like a health nut. <laughs> anyway, the chicken salad is was and still is next level. Uh, shout out shout out to the Strand Cafe, Jetty Road, Glenelg, South Australia, Adelaide. Amazing. So this dressing is as close as I can get without the Colonel Sanders secrets, herbs and spices. Um, <laughs> like I don't know the secret of how they make it, but this is as close as it gets and it is bloody wicked. This is the dressing. Honey mustard, put it whack straight in your burger. <laughs> <laughs> so when we do onion rings, there's a certain way you got to cut an onion. You cut an onion so it ends up like this, not like this. That was my first attempt, leave it alone. So, onion rings in the batter, and then... Oh my god, what is this? I made oh, churros. Oh, you made churros? Daughter of the year. Are you serious? Yep, the best one. Plus. Wacky do. Have to... hey, hey. Fine. What are you doing? Anyway. What do you think this is? Thank you. <laughs> you can have one. Ah! Not that one, not that one. Of course, that one's the best one. <laughs> Alright, Morgan, tell me about the onion ring experience. Oh, did you hear that? Hang on, ready? <laughs> Put that in your mouth and just crunch that. Go. All right, on a scale of one to 10, where one is like, it's the worst onion ring you've ever had, and 10 is like, it's changed your life forever. I would say 10. It's changed your life. Yeah. We're gonna call them change your life onion rings. Yeah. That good? As good as riding on the tube behind the tinny? Yeah, no, no. Is that better than onion rings? Yeah. Really? I know, food's good, but I know, it's more fun. All right, let's get the burgers, eh? Hey? All right, so what we're going to do now is cut the uh, Spanish mac. I keep going to say walu. So here in Fiji, uh, they call Spanish mackerel walu. So that Spanish mac that I got today 
I cut that, I filleted that and I've cut it into steaks. Let me just get them out of the bag here. So I've cut it into steaks, right? So like amazing, thick, juicy steaks. Like mackerel is the best flesh ever, I reckon. So yeah, I've cut it into nice big chunky steaks. Now, but they're too thick for a burger. Well, might not be too thick for a, a Phil and Man's burger. But uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice those sort of down to make it a bit thinner, sort of patty style. And I've got dogs sniffing around me wanting theirs. So I just cut it through like this, All right? And then you end up with like just an awesome, like ready to batter and then fry. Look at that, like, holy cow, man. It's the best. Dolly, for your patience, ready? Oh, sorry, that's landed on your face. Now I've got Gracie at me. You want some too, Gracie? Hey, you're wet, mate. What have you been doing? All right, let's cut this little bit off for you, Gracie. Sit. Is that good? Hmm? Good? How about you, sideburns? Good stuff? I know I've said this in a couple of other videos, but if you're ever frying stuff, like crumbed or battered, heaps of people will just sit it directly on paper towel to try and soak the oil in that off and stuff goes a bit mushy. If you sit it on a rack like that, like a steel cake rack, um, things stay really crispy. All right, let's chuck it in. Oh my God. So you drain that. And you put it on the cardiac arrest plate. Yeah, constructing burgers. All right, get away more. Yeah. Oh -ho! That is so good that I could have just a bowl of that. I don't know if you're doing more. Oh my god, look at that golden, crispy brown. This is for the kitties. Right, skimp on then. Skimp, <laughs> no, skimp on the kids. A little bit of onion <laughs> ring for them. One onion ring each. <laughs> Dinner is served. Turn the plate like it is last time. Oh. Yum. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh. Rubs up. Alright, pick up that burger. And tell us what you think. Come on. Ready? Ready for the crunch? Okay. I'm ready for the, the verdict. Give me the score. Mm. Okay, Nine out of ten. Needs we more sauce. A... Needs more. You know what? Mum went tight ass with your sauce because Mum wants the sauce for her. So she said, let's not put much on the kids one so we can have more sauce. No, that was the Naughty mum. <laughs> and tonight's dessert, courteous of me. Morgan the Great. Morgan the chef. I made churros. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video even just half as much as we've, as we've enjoyed eating this stuff. Oh my godly gosh. Wow, that seriously tastes like the strand, that sauce. Wacky do. Seriously. Wacky do and the strand, we're coming for you. Well, the strand open, Cafe, yeah. Glenelg, South Australia, <laughs> Jetty Road. We're coming for you. We have duplicated your dressing. See you on See the next, next one, guys. guys.